you know, when it comes to 3D printing for production parts, for mass production, it's always been about trade-offs. It's been about resolution, accuracy, fine, but with very long build times. You want pounds on the ground, you can extrude more material, but do that, again, there's a price in surface finish, in resolution. I'm with John Good, he's VP Global Sales and Marketing for 3D Platform, and John, I understand that, that you take a slightly different take on this. There are ways in which you can have your cake and eat it too, in terms of mass production, 3D printed parts. Absolutely, it's kind of interesting. When we start out, everybody wanted high fidelity parts, near and surface finish. Uh, but there was a trade-off. As an example, this palm that I'm holding, this would be an approximately a 100 hour print, which is a long time. So people have been looking for alternatives. What we are showing today is a couple of things. The ability to go ahead and make a choice, uh, an objective choice. By using larger nozzle sizes, imagine being able to print that exact same part in 10 hours, roughly one-tenth the print time, but still achieve the print fidelity by using some industry standard finishing techniques that have come out of the automotive industry. But we didn't want to stop there. One of the things that we're showing here at the show is taking extruder throughput to the next level. Imagine increasing extruder capacity by a factor of 16, taking a print from 320 hours down to 20 hours. And that, that's very impactful in terms of time to market, operating cost, and ultimately, it allows customers, engineers, to make good design decisions, fidelity versus speed and strength. Now John, uh, the part you're holding, for example, here, now that would be wildly unacceptable in almost any mass production process at the point, but using commonly available modern coating techniques as possible to actually use this to substrate and get a, a, a smooth, like a glass A finished part? Absolutely, in fact, if you were to go ahead and look at the paints that have been developed for the automotive industry, scratch, dent, auto repair, uh, high fill primers from folks like Pittsburgh Paint and Glass work phenomenally well and allow you to go ahead and achieve mirror, achieve mirror finishes where in the past uh, you know, you'd be spending hours and hours sanding. Mm -hmm. So it's a, an example of this industry embracing some of the, the things that have developed around us to take it to the next level. Now this, um, this is a filament fed, I understand you can also work with, with, with granular uh, resins. Commodity resins, engineering resins, what range of materials can you work with here? Uh, it depends. Uh, in filament fed, typically you're limited by a melt point, of, let's say roughly, 300 to 500 degrees centigrade. When you get into pellet fed, you can go higher temperature than that, and now it becomes a, a matter of what polymer is right for your application. Anything from simple PLAs through engineered polymers, such as PETG, ABS, uh, glass and uh, carbon filled, but then you know some people want to go beyond that, and there's a lot of developments uh, in the industry for that. Now, it, when we're when we're essentially trading off build resolution for speed in this case, the implication clearly is if I can get more filament through the the machine, I can increase my build rate, increase my, my throughput, but I'm intrinsically limited by the rate at which I can melt that filament. So how do I configure my machine to optimize to get the, the most number of pounds on the ground? <laughs> well, the way we've done it is, quite honestly, it comes down to, uh, for, for engineers, it's thermal management. We've had to go ahead and evolve from extruders that might be 40 watts to introducing extruders that are driving in excess of 900 watts. And then when we go pellet fed, even higher than that. So it's about putting energy in to melt the plastic, and then the fun starts because you've got to cool things down. So uh, yeah, we've spent a lot of time working on that. Now John, about that cooling, and naturally of course is that you've, you've, you've got a greater thermal mass at this point, but you still want to layer that thing as fast as you possibly can at that point. Uh, traditionally, cooling's been passive, essentially. You know, and we, We've all seen shops where they'll, still, they'll rig up a, a fan and, and just blow, blow some air across the thing. What do you do to, to, to improve that cooling rate when you get these really high throughput, these big high wattage extruders? Well, without giving away all of the secrets, it really amounts to, to going in using radiator-like technology to go ahead and bring cooling, water or glycol cooling to the heat zones. John Good at 3D Platform says, think about your strategy carefully when you're looking for a high throughput and a great surface finish with filament-fed additive manufactured products.